Spirits near, I call to you. Is anyone with me today? That doesn't make sense. If you move it to no, then somebody has to be there. Hey, that is just rude. Welcome to Film Theory, the show that bends over backwards to deliver you scarily good theories. Hello! And when I say backwards, I mean really bends over backwards. Now, with Halloween fast approaching, we're about to experience one of fall's spookiest trends. And no, I don't mean people dressing up as clowns trying to lure children into the woods. But while we're on the subject, this trend is freaking me out. Sorry all you trick-or-treaters, but any of you who show up at my house this Halloween dressed as clowns might get yourself reflexed kicked in the chest. Consider this your first and last warning. Anyway, the trend I was referring to was the Halloween horror cash grab, as every year movie studios rush in to make cheap, scary movie sequels that'll get them a quick buck. And often, in their collective race to the bottom, they're greenlighting projects that no one liked in the first place. Case in point, the topic for today, Ouija. A movie series rocking a solid 7% fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes. I think it's safe to say that the movie-going audience wasn't clamoring for a sequel on this one. And can you blame them? It's a movie based on a board game. And we saw how well that worked out with Battleship a few years ago. Except here, I hesitate to even give it the credit of calling it a game, since it requires someone to move that little plastic piece as though it's possessed by a ghost, and then lie about it to the rest of the group. Which means if you have a bunch of honest friends like good old Matt Pat here, and no one moves the darn thing, you just have to wait there and nothing happens. Here's a better name for it. Sit there and look like an idiot. There's your truth in advertising. Slap that one onto the box. <sighs> Sorry, the rage pad is strong with this one. I'm just upset that I spent $20 on a piece of cardboard and a crappy plastic triangle. So, why am I talking about these movies when I could be out there pumpkin picking or sampling some exotic butters? Well, as I watched the trailers for this year's new installment, Ouija Origin of Evil, something clicked in my little brainy head. This lame modern horror franchise may actually be connected to one one of the greatest classic horror franchises of all time. The Exorcist. In fact, Regan, the main character from The Exorcist, you know the one, the vomit spewing conduit for satanic demons? Yeah, her. She may be the one to blame for all of the events of the Ouija series. Ouija? Ouija. I, I pronounce it Ouija, as in Creepy Luigi. I just double-checked the Cambridge English Dictionary, and it is in fact Ouija in the US and in the UK. Boom. Knowledge dropped. Okay, maybe not in the UK, only in the US, but... You know what, it's one of those things. Gif, jif. Let's all just get along and pronounce it. Gif, 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 gif. How about we pronounce it? Piece of shit board. How about that? You heard me right. I'm saying Ouija 1 and 2 may just be the unofficial sequels to The Exorcist. How cool would that be? Well, get ready, because we're going to have ourselves a devilishly good time today. And be warned, because of the subject material, there are some graphic images ahead. Now, before we begin, here's what you need to know about both movies in less than 60 seconds. Start the clock. Now. The Exorcist starts in Washington, D.C., where a tween girl is living with her mother, who happens to be a famous actress. The girl, Regan, starts behaving strangely, convulsing, peeing in front of company, and using very creative profanity. Your mother sucks yep. some hell. After a battery of medical tests, Regan's mom suggests that she is possessed by the devil and seeks an exorcism. Two priests are assigned to the task. After Regan redecorates the walls a bit, the priests are separated, the old one has a heart attack and dies, the young one says to the demon, Come at me, bro! The demon does indeed, possessing the young priest, who then jumps out the window to his death, supposedly ridding the world of the demon. Regan is back to normal and life goes on, or does it? It does, at least until the sequel. Ouija starts out with two young girls playing with a Ouija board and talking about the do's and don'ts of playing. Years later, one of them commits suicide, so the other tries to contact her using the exact same board, except, dun dun dun, they actually contact the spirit of another dead girl named Doris, who starts to terrorize the group of friends and force them to kill themselves. They eventually burn Doris's old mummified body and the Ouija board, and they live happily ever after with their PTSD. 
Or do they? They do, probably until the sequel. Whew, y'all caught up? Good. Now a bunch of you are still probably saying that I'm crazy for thinking that there's some kind of connection between these two movies, so let's just start off with the one that sparked my interest in this theory to begin with, the Ouija board. Now obviously, the Ouija board is important in the movie named after it, it serves as a conduit through which spirits enter the real world. But now let's look at The Exorcist. Sure, everybody remembers the big moments like the head spin and lines like, the power of Christ compels you, but I bet most of you have forgotten how Regan herself got possessed in the first place. Early in the movie, Regan tells her mother that she's found a Ouija board in the closet, and that she plays with it with her invisible friend Captain Howdy. Okay, time out. If someone introduces themselves to you as Captain Howdy, you're at best a child molester and at worst a demon, so just walk away. This has been a Film Theory Public Service announcement. Now before she found this Ouija board, Regan was fine, but after she starts communing with Captain Howdy, everything goes to hell. Hell. Get it? Jokes are great. Now all you astute theorists might be thinking that correlation isn't causation. That we can't just say because weird stuff started happening after Regan started playing with a Ouija board that the Ouija board is to blame. But let's turn back to Ouija the movie, which sets forth three rules for safe spirit contact. One, never play in a graveyard. Two, always say goodbye. <laughs> So dumb. That's the reason you have a 7% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, Ouija. And three, never play alone. It's rule number three that's important here. In the first Ouija movie, Debbie uses the board by herself, and it's what causes Doris to start haunting her. And it's the same thing with Regan and Captain Howdy. She plays alone, and she gets possessed. And mind you, these aren't some general rules from the board game. They're made up in the movie universe, so there's really no reason why the boards would behave so similarly in both movies, unless this happened to be a shared universe. Universe. Now, there's another problem here that some of you are probably thinking. In Ouija, the teenagers aren't possessed. They summon the spirit of Doris, the angry ghost of an evil girl. That's nothing like Regan and the Exorcist, who actually gets possessed by the devil. So how on earth could I say that these boards function in the same way? Well, let's clear some things up. First, Regan isn't actually possessed by the devil. It's a common misconception, and you can't be faulted for making it when Regan says things like, And I'm the devil. But in The Exorcist 2: The Heretic, it's actually revealed that Regan was possessed by Pazuzu, an ancient Babylonian wind demon. If that seems completely random, it's actually not. Remember in the first movie that we see an archaeological dig site in Iraq where Father Marin, the soon-to-be puke receptacle, discovers a figurine of a demon? Well, that demon is Pazuzu. And if you look carefully, there's actually a good shot of Regan reaching out to Pazuzu during the exorcism scene at the end of the movie. Look at that, smart filmmaking, guys. Now, obviously, I'm not going to argue that Doris, the little girl from Ouija, is an ancient myth. Middle Eastern demon, but I am gonna point out that the new movie Ouija Origin of Evil is a prequel about Doris's origin story. And we can see in the trailers that she didn't start off as just some angry ghost. It appears that she uses a Ouija board alone back in the late 1960s and gets herself possessed by, you guessed it, a demon spirit that comes out of the board. So in both Exorcist and the Ouija prequel, the boards function the same way. You play alone, you get yourself possessed by a demon. But whip out those ropes rosary beads, loyal theorists, because not only do the boards act the same way, but the demons do too. It's time to do some demon analysis. Similarity number one, their targets. Pazuzu and the Ouija demon not only come into the world the same way, but they also use similar people as conduits. Both Doris and Regan are preteen girls without a father figure. In fact, in the trailer for Ouija Origin of Evil, Doris looks like she's trying to contact what we assume is her dead father through the board, before she gets herself throat punched by the leather daddy gimp demon. Regan's father, meanwhile, isn't dead, but he does live abroad in Italy and doesn't bother to talk to his daughter even on her own birthday. In both cases, we've got young women without a strong man presence in their lives, which makes it much easier for them to be seduced and corrupted by a male spiritual presence. Similarity number two, the eyes. Perhaps the thing that most shocked audiences about The Exorcist was the battery of grotesque physical transformations Regan undergoes throughout the movie. You probably remember her cracked skin and janky teeth, but on a number of occasions, Regan's eyes roll into the back of her head and look all white. Ouija gives us way fewer visual clues to tell us that people are possessed, but we do see the group's eyes turn that same milky white when they're attacked by by Doris. But that's just what your eyes do when you're possessed by a demon, object those of you who are suddenly experts on demonic possession. Well, here's the thing. I'd be willing to overlook this if white eyes were a universally accepted movie trope, like how you have to walk slowly away from something that you blow up, but it's not. In the exorcism of Emily Rose, Dexter's sister's eyes just dilate and turn black when they're possessed, and Sister Mary Eunice's eyes turn red in season two of American Horror Story. The white eyes shared by Regan, the kids in Ouija, and Doris in the origin story isn't 
isn't necessarily the smoking gun, but it is another prominent connection of these sorts of possessions. And we're still not done. Just look at similarity number three, the demon's powers. Probably the best way to draw parallels between the demons we see in The Exorcist and Ouija is by comparing how they act and what they're able to do. And the overlap here is actually surprising. Both demons have the unusual ability to enable their possessee to speak in tongues. When Pazuzu possesses Regan, she's suddenly able to speak several different languages, from Latin to French to Italian. Fair enough. But then in the trailer for Ouija Origin of Evil, it's revealed that after Doris starts acting strangely, she writes a number of letters in Polish. Huh. Interesting shared connection there. Seems like both of our demons happen to be linguistics majors. And then there's the subject of levitation. Some of the earliest hijinks the demon causes in The Exorcist include making Regan's bed levitate off the ground, which by the end of the movie has graduated to making Regan herself levitate into the air. Similarly, Doris's victims in Ouija levitate cleanly off the ground. And even Doris herself seems to be able to defy gravity, as evidenced by this clip that we get of the new movie, in which Doris crawls her way up the side of the staircase with her eyes in that glossy, white, possessed look. A scene, mind you, that is very reminiscent of The Exorcist's nightmare-inducing, body-contorting spider walk down the stairs. And speaking of demons compelling their conduits to move down the stairs in creepy ways, how about that classic exorcist flexibility? Well, in the opening of the Ouija Origin of Evil trailer, we see Doris being bent backwards in a position that would allow her to do something like the spider walk. In fact, both Regan's demon and Doris's demon seem to be able to defy human anatomy, contorting the body in ways that should be breaking the little girl's bones and joints, be it the owl head spin in The Exorcist or Doris's jaw drop. So there are a lot of similarities here. Yes, some are shared in large part with possessions in general, but a lot of this, like the languages and the backbends, are specific to this movie franchise. But still, at the beginning of all this, I claim that Regan may have started the events of Ouija. And for all the similar possession rules and demonic powers, in order to really connect Doris and Regan, we need to simply connect them via time and place. And believe it or not, we can do that too. Although the events of The Exorcist are never given a specific date, we know it occurs sometime after 1954, since Regan's mother Chris is set to star in a movie about the Vietnam War protests, and 1954 is the year that that war started. But we also know that The Exorcist takes place before 1971, since that's the year The Exorcist book, which prompted the movie, was written. Based on the early release promotional materials, we know that the events of Ouija Origin of Evil are set in the 1960s. The late 1960s. So the timing of these two movies lines up, but what about the location? Well, The Exorcist famously takes place in the Georgetown area of Washington, D.C., whereas Ouija Origin of Evil is taking place in Los Angeles. Seems like we're kinda out of luck, right? But, at the end of The Exorcist, we see Regan and her mother packing up to move out of Washington, D.C., eager to get away from the horrors they just went through. And where are they moving to? I bet you can guess. It's Los Angeles. Regan's mother is an actress, after all. That puts Regan and all her stuff, including one possessed Ouija board, back in in LA. The same city, Origin of Evil, will soon happen. In fact, the trailer for the new Ouija shows that Doris goes to a Catholic school in LA. And if you were Regan's mom with a daughter who just was possessed by a spawn of Satan, wouldn't you put Regan in a Catholic school the second you got back to LA? Yes! In other words, all the details line up for the same Ouija board that possessed Regan in Georgetown to be present in Los Angeles and ready to possess Doris in Los Angeles just a few years later. Let me put it this way. When it comes to the Ouija movies, Regan and the Exorcist might just be the true origin of evil. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And cut. Leather Daddy Gimp Demon, Leather Daddy Gimp Demon. <laughs> so dumb.